When you're looking for ischemia or injury in the myocardium, you need to know what you're looking for and where to look for it. So the first sign of ischemia is a peaked T wave. Then you see a flipped T wave or inverted T wave. Then you see ST depressions and then you see ST elevations and then you see Q waves. So whenever you're looking for EKG changes, it's always important to compare it to an old EKG if, if one's available. So by knowing our dance that we learned earlier, we want to look in contiguous leads or the leads that are looking at the same region of the heart. The leads I look at first are 1, AVL, V5, and V6. These are all the lateral leads, typically correlate with the left circumflex. So the baseline is the TP segment, and I don't see any peak T waves, inverted T waves, SD changes in lead 1 or AVL. No changes in V5, no changes in V6. I look to look at 2, 3, and AVF. These are my inferior leads. They typically look at the inferior portion of the heart, correlating with the RCA. No changes in 2, maybe a T wave inversion in lead 3, no ST changes in AVF. Finally, the anterior leads, V1, V2, V3, V4. V1, V2, V3, V4, this correlates with the LAD. Inverted T wave in V1 after an RSR prime. Some T wave flattening in V2. No ST changes in V3. No ST changes in V4. So that EKG didn't really show any major signs of ischemia or injury. So here we have an example of ST depressions in the inferior leads. So here's a good example of ST depressions in lead 2. Also ST depressions in lead 3 as well as ST depressions in AVF. So in this EKG, this is the pathology that's going on. Depolarization moves towards the ischemic tissue. The subendocardium is the last place the coronary artery supplies, making it the most sensitive to any blockage or lesion in the coronary artery. So depolarization is moving towards the ischemic tissue and away from the inferior leads. And that generalized vector is pointing away from the inferior leads. And again, away from a lead is negative, And that's what causes the ST depressions. In ST elevation, the pathology is a little bit different. There's 100% obstruction. So the whole thick piece of myocardium is not getting any blood flow. So this is the cardiac catheterization of an ST elevation MI. There's 100% total occlusion of the right coronary artery. And here's the EKG showing ST elevations in lead 2, ST elevations in lead 3, and ST elevations in AVF. So in ST elevation, that's caused by 100% total occlusion of the artery, which leaves the whole wall of the myocardium without blood. This is known as a transmural infarct. And again, the vector points towards the ischemic tissue. So the vector here, again, points towards leads 2, 3, and AVF, which gives us the appearance of ST elevations on EKG. And this is what the right coronary artery looks like after intervention is done. And the total occlusion of the artery really shows the importance of getting these patients to the cath lab in 90 minutes. The posterior wall of the heart might get ignored by the lead, but if someone presents with ST depressions in V1, V2, or V3, you might want to consider calling the cath lab because this could be a total occlusion of an artery supplying the posterior wall of the heart. So then you're looking at the EKG and you Missy Elliott it. You flip it and reverse it. Then after you flip it and reverse it, look in leads V1, V2, and V3, and you will see ST elevations. And this is a sign of a posterior STEMI. A Q wave on EKG represents death of myocardial tissue. It's a negative deflection on the EKG, more than one box wide and one box deep. So when you're looking at an EKG and the more contiguous leads have the same pattern of ischemia or injury, and the patient has a right history and physical exam, you should be very comfortable making a clinical decision.